So as a self-proclaimed lazy gold maker, I've delved into all the new dragonflight gold making and profession changes to see what is the best way to make significant amounts of gold while minimizing my game time or at least making it as brainless and as efficient as possible. And in this video, I'm going to specifically cover profession combos for dragonflight, the ones that namely I think are going to be the best for lazy casuals quote unquote like myself. And not only that, but also the specific profession specializations to prioritize as in you want to level them up first while you go through the new endgame professions progression systems or like your talent trees but for professions in order to maximize and level up first the best perks for this lazy gold making strategy. And so first having access to as many professions and max level characters is obviously going to be optimal right? However with Dragonflight this has become a lot more difficult especially compared to the previous expansions due to the new late game progression systems and activities one will actually have to do on a max level character to earn these new talent points for each profession specialization. Meaning that it's going to be a bit more difficult to run this um, across multiple alts much less having to level up multiple characters to you know max level to be able to access a lot of these activities and then progress through these talent trees right and so uh, compared to before where one can just learn a profession and look up like a profession power leveling guide and not necessarily even have to be max level sometimes to be able to access most of the recipes or a lot of the recipes in a given profession in dragonflight with the trainer learn recipes you can only get to half of the max skills that are available so 50 out of 100 skill levels are through the trainer learn recipes and then you'll have to start progressing and not only gain talent points through doing these end game activities but also through these talent points and learning your specialization learning the new recipes and end game recipes that are really going to be making you the most gold and so with that my plan is to level up two characters to max level as quickly as i can again to get them rolling through the profession talent point acquisition system so to speak and then any new characters that i will level up and other professions that i'll acquire will just be bonuses now as for what i actually consider a so-called lazy goal making strategy especially with the connected auction houses for commodities i'm not going to be doing commodities for what i want to sell in the auction house primarily because the market's going to be moving really fast and also the profit margins are going to be relatively low because of the large bulk of items that are going to be on the commodity markets which does suit a certain playstyle if you're going to be listing and reposting and constantly you know crafting um, it could be a really really good way to make gold but not for my sort of set and forget strategy in this case right and thus in my case i would like to focus on primarily crafting gear which will be realm specific and thus they won't move as quickly while also ensuring for the most part decent profit margins so for instance i usually just have to relist based on my past experience anyway once or twice per day and still be able to maintain a decent pace of sales just by focusing on selling gear and as for gathering professions obviously dual gathering is still going to be quite powerful in dragonflight especially if you can get a head start and spec deeply into both professions to allow you to gather well much more efficiently on your mount and also get better materials than other people um, however this just really isn't the play style for me as i don't want to spend time to do gathering and um, it's just never been a thing that i've really enjoyed so it's just more of a personal preference and I do on the flip side really enjoy uh, crafting and again the ability to be able to just craft stuff, list them and not spend too much time on that right and then just sort of set and forget and wait for them to sell and then occasionally come back and relist them say once or twice a day. That has worked really well for me and thus is one of the reasons I'm picking these profession combos. And so of these characters, the very first profession combination that I've decided to prioritize again for the most lazy and sort of semi set and forget strategy based on my previous experience as well 
is to take blacksmithing and leatherworking. Blacksmithing mainly to focus on weaponsmithing, and I'm especially excited for this because blacksmiths weren't actually able to make competitive endgame weapons in Shadowlands, so this is actually something that is making a return from previous expansions, which by the way I've made a lot of gold on. Um, and also blacksmithing is very good for crafting profession tools, and I believe this will be sort of a secondary sort of underdog if weaponsmithing, for example, gets really competitive of my server, I'll have tool crafting potentially to lean on for a secondary sort of specialization um, and as a backup plan. And by the way, these tools and accessories are just going to be uh, the new types of profession equipment that every profession pretty much will use as um, equipment to boost up different stats for optimizing their crafting and gathering. And so this will definitely be in huge demand alongside the aforementioned weapons. Now in terms of specialization and the profession talent points, or in this case it's actually called profession knowledge, but it's really just talent points. But anyhow, um, I think that people will eventually come out with, especially like the mathematicians and min maxers, will come out with more cookie cutter builds and spec pads. Kind of similar to what they did with Legion Artifacts back in the day, if you were playing around that time. But I'm just going to give you a sort of brief overview in terms of my own um, theory crafting, if we can even call it that, and the specialization paths that I think will do well and what to prioritize. So just like a simplified version, but again, if these like min-max like cookie cutter builds do come out, we can obviously just go back to Wowhead and just refer to them, right? Very easy as well. And so again, starting off, the first priority that I would have for blacksmithing is weaponsmithing. And as you can see here, you actually need to spend 10 points into the main overall weaponsmithing um, skill, so to speak, to be able to unlock specializations under that. And there are two types of categories of weapons. One is hafted, the other is, I think it's blades or something. Um, hafted is mainly axes and maces and maybe a couple of other things. That's probably going to be the one I prioritize. Okay, it's maces, hammers, axes, and picks. So these are probably the ones I'm going to prioritize first, but soon after I will go and unlock blades, which will have, I think swords are very popular, daggers maybe not as much because rogues are pretty much the only class that'll be that'll be using it. And then as for the specific talent points, I'm probably going to be not maxing out each of these subspecs. So for example, for axis, pixies, and pole arms, I'm probably going to put about 20 points into it because especially I think the last node is not looking as good because it's just to use like a finishing reagent to do something with it. Um, there's some other like final perks, which is like you get to repair for free or whatever. That's obviously not that useful for gold making. So do kind of pick and choose, especially the final nodes of each circle. You want to see which ones are actually useful. But for the most part, the last few nodes are going to be more powerful. So um, if you do want to specialize really heavily into one specific type of thing, going for depth over breath, um, the last few nodes are going to be probably more powerful, in general at least, than the other ones. Um, however, for blacksmithing and just crafting gear in general, I also think that um, personally, I'm not going to go as deep into each subspec, and I would rather have a little bit more breadth. Um, so personally, I'm not as um, adamant about crafting the absolute best items. I'll just want to craft like decent items for you know maybe more casual players and then be able to cover more bases. That's sort of more of my priority and what's worked quite well for me in the past as well. Especially for like gear as well, right? In Shadowlands with like the different uh, crafter, crafters marks and different um, gear pieces, I found that having more breadth is usually quite good and perhaps if one category of item starts to sell well based on your observation right by listing a lot of items at the, at the same time and then be able to see the data and then you'll be able to prioritize and spec deeply more deeply into the ones that are selling well or have better profit margins etc and speaking of profit margins another really interesting i noticed for these crafting professions is that they usually have one tree that is just making your crafting more optimal so for example for blacksmithing it's called hammer control so i would imagine after you spec deeply into weaponsmithing hammer control will be the next thing you want to spec in well at least personally that's what i would do because um, i'm not interested in specking as much into like the um 
polishing stones or whatever like consumables i'm definitely not going to do consumables because of the join auction house making it so that it's not as set and forget right compared to like selling gear and so specking into hammer control will allow you to get inspiration and resourcefulness respectively which will allow you to craft just higher item level pieces of gear in general and with resourcefulness so that was inspiration and then with ins resourcefulness you'll be able to recuperate more materials as you craft hence basically making your crafts cheaper right and requiring less materials so these are just ways to help optimize and make your main crafts more profitable if you do decide to specialize right but going for other options like armor smithing can be very viable as well if you want a bit more breadth um, and also as i said before the profession tools i think are sort of an underdog and i would probably go into that as my secondary tree maybe put a little bit into hammer control and then spec more deeply into the profession tools if that is um, going to be selling well in the auction house now it's also important to note that you are eventually going to be able to earn every single specialization and max them out as long as you keep keeping up with the profession uh, knowledge but order does definitely matter right especially at the start of the expansion wherein people who are first to market and um, when there's less competition as a result you'll be able to make more gold right and so this is yet another one of my guiding philosophies for how I prioritize specialization points in that I want to niche down into certain items that are going to be fairly hot, relatively speaking. For example, if they are too competitive on the auction house, which I don't think like weapons will be, I can still somewhat pivot into other branches um, of that profession, right? Such as with blacksmithing, there's like tool crafting, right? This as an example. And as for leatherworking, the concept is largely going to be the same as blacksmithing where I'm going to focus mostly on one specialization, this time being male crafting because I think Draxir are going to be quite popular and thus male armor is going to be in decent demand. So I'm likely going to specialize fairly deeply into, by the way, there's different sub-specializations for male. As you can see, they're split in two different categories. Uh, but I'm probably going to specialize fairly deeply into the first half and then before I max them all out, I'm also going to uh, get at least unlock some of the other ones to be able to cover more of my bases before actually completely fully maxing out the other half, right? But this can sort of depend and change based on how the theory crafting turns out and also largely based on how things uh, turn out on my realm's market, right? For example, if there are certain pieces that are selling better or if there's a lot more competition for the uh, so-called half of male armor that I'm specializing in, maybe that would incentivize me more to specialize and diversify into the other half of gear or even leather gear as well, right? And again, similar to blacksmithing and probably every other crafting profession, there's also something called leatherworking discipline, which if you spec into it, and I recommend this being likely the second tree that you spec into after your main one, will give you crafting bonuses and allow you to get better profit margins by increasing your inspiration stat, which again increases the item level or chance to sort of critically strike and get better item level on your items, and also resourcefulness, which again helps you save materials. So that is largely my strategy, gear crafting for my first max level character with blacksmithing and leatherworking. Now for my second character that I plan to level to max level, I also want to focus on gear crafting as well to go along with my sort of lazy gold making strat. But this time, the professions that I'm going to take, the first one on my second character is going to be inscription. Now, inscription is not the first profession that people usually think about when it comes to making gear, but it's actually extremely underrated in this regard, in my opinion, especially because of the staves that you can actually craft, um, the weapons that are actually usable by a very large proportion of specializations within the game. And again, people don't usually notice this, but it is actually quite almost comparable to the amount of weapons and specializations that this covers, even compared to blacksmithing. And on top of that, as a bonus, Inscription also offers very useful items like consumables to help every profession get profession knowledge quicker, and even things like misses, similar to in Shadowlands, where you can customize the stats, the secondary stats of any craftable piece of gear, which again synergizes really well with my other professions because I'm going to be focusing on crafting gear, right? 
And thus for inscription, I'm largely going to be focusing on woodworking, which is crafting staves. However, crafting Dark Moon cards and specializing in that can be a viable strategy, likely, as well. In fact, I did make a lot of gold with Dark Moon cards at the beginning of BFA, but this time around, I'd rather not have to deal with the complication of it with like the cards being random and having to create a deck out of them and things like that. Um, and also a lot of the competition that I think I'll have to face. And finally, for my last professional, my second character, I plan to get jewel crafting, which again is similar to inscription, is not a profession that people typically think about when it comes to like lazy gold making and crafting gear. However, I think it's greatly underrated because amulets and rings are in fact usable by every single specialization in the game, right? And also on top of that, if you have inscription and are able to make missives with just two different crafts, the basic ring and amulet, you can actually use missives to craft different types of optimal stats for every single specialization in the game right? and thus be able to list tons of different rings and necklaces with just pretty much one recipe but using these missives you can actually have optimal pieces of gear for all the different specs throughout the game. And that is pretty much it for my preliminary lazy gold making dragonfly strategy. Again it is going to be better and more optimal if you have access to obviously more professions and specializations and have more characters rolling with their profession knowledge. Um, but for me, I'm a casual player, so I think maintaining two characters is fairly realistic. But obviously, I'm still open to expanding my strategy to more characters if I get to leveling them up and whatnot. Anyhow, let me know what you think about this video, whether you have other suggestions for specifically lazy goal making. And with that, also you can check out my previous video where I covered some of the best old expansion recipes that are easy to maintain as well to carry forward into Dragonflight. And lastly, if you're actually interested in starting your own profitable YouTube channel on say gaming or whatever topic, feel free to check out my second channel as well where I cover all sorts of strategies for that and my own experiences. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.